All right. Um, so yeah, I guess the easy thing to say would be Rise of Skywalker was. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it specifically in as many words, but I thought it was a disaster. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. Do you think it's better or worse than the Last Jedi? Uh, I've had that discussion with a couple of people. We're doing a podcast <laughs> tomorrow to go just through qu- it. Just quick. Just quick. What What do you reckon? Honestly, yes, I'm no? on the fence. It's really the problem, so the, the way I, I would break it down simply is I think TLJ does more damage to character, but uh, Rise of Skywalker has I think done the most damage to the legacy of Star Wars. Like it, it's completely undone Anakin's sacrifice, mm. which was and the. Does it, does it not bug you how? this last one feels way more like a, a product and not like a... Sure. It a, feels like a, it's trying to pander to everybody. Voice. Like, even if you hate The Last Jedi and, you know, I'm, I'm gradually getting there, clearly. Um, at least it was one guy's, like, story and vision. Like, uh, that's something at the very Yeah, least. yeah, I'm, I'm actually in favor of the singular writer-director, assuming they are able to handle it all and stuff. And, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I would never have been on board with JJ taking the ending of the trilogy. He's... Like yeah. I'm very familiar with his work, and Ooh, yeah, he's just not. Who else it. could have? Who else even wanted the job? <laughs> it's like an impossible <laughs> fucking job. I can't That's believe true. You That's true. That's true. I gotta be honest with you, man. Like if, I, well, then again, if I was offered like a billion dollars or whatever to do it, I probably would be interested. Yeah, but I would actually the money. I would tell people like, I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I feel like I could have done better than JJ, at least in writing the story. Because <laughs> my God, the MacGuffins, man. <laughs> I think I, I think it's a, it was actually an impossible task. I can't imagine even where you'd begin, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, what it's, is left? Well, that's the, uh, yeah, that's part of it. So a lot of people will, will say that, you know, TLJ was damaged because of the fact that it had to be a sequel to the terrible TFA. But ROS, or whatever you want to call it, Tross, Episode Nine was <laughs> also damaged by the fact that it had to be a sequel to a film that ended, like everything ended. I don't even know where they were supposed to go. Yeah. Like, I love that we open with Ray training as if it's like, hey, look. I, that's my, that's the exact I had. I was like, I can't believe this. Like, the, the character's supposed to have progressed a little bit, you know? <laughs> they're, supposed, they're supposed to be, like, in the last chapter the, of their, their story at this point. The one time she trains, she loses to Kylo. Yeah. <laughs> that makes <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> They've yeah, made yeah. it, like, the complete reverse of how we understood it with Luke. It, yeah, it's total pandering to, to like feedback. You know, they're they're not even making their own movie anymore. They're just making a, a checklist based on things people are saying online. And so we we make sort of jokes about how like um, they take shots at TLJ in the trailer by having uh, remaking the mask. I never expected there to be so many, so many blatant Dude, it, shots against like, TLJ yeah, in this film. It's like a bitter movie, yeah. which was like. One of the weirdest aspects to me, because it's like a, a hateful film almost. Like that was bothering me almost more than anything. It's like, okay, you could have at least been a, a little bit glass half full about it. Like, fuck me. Like, there's still the middle film in the trilogy for God's sake. Like, it doesn't just not exist. The way they just <laughs> ignore Rose, she's like kicked out of the film. <laughs> yeah, like it. It creates even more problems because it makes it just weirder that Finn doesn't even like talk to her about like the kiss they had or like there's just there's no implication as to their relationship at that point like yeah it's ignored yeah and uh, that's the same lots of TLJ is retconned like the uh they call Holdo's maneuver a one in a million shot I don't I don't think yeah that just made me ask ask even more questions about it you know how could that be that (laughs) that just made it even more distracting I would have preferred if they just didn't mention it because then you can just pretend that it doesn't exist. But now they got you thinking about it. The just to try is a and pretty you. big target. I don't see how she was going to miss if she went straight forward. If that's how that works, I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, that. and there are like so many other more creative ways they could have tried to write themselves out of it. But that was the way they took it. All right. And and that's the thing. If we ignore Star Wars and the Last Jedi and everything else, the film itself is god awful. This is your standard sort of uh, writing issues. The entire final yeah. battle is is ridiculous they say that uh the ships don't know how to go up on their own they have to have someone tell them how so if they destroy that thing they win the just the fleet of like death star enabled star destroyers like yeah. i can't believe that like what is in- enticing about that? <laughs> well what can be bigger than that that's we've we've max we've got an army of star destroyers mobile star destroyers. well i say mobile but like more mobile and yeah, it's oh, insane. It's J.J. Abrams. That's what I mean. Like all of this just matches amazing. up with what he does. Um, yeah, I compared it to Star Trek Into Darkness. Have you seen that movie? 
Yes. Um, without knowing anything about Star Trek, I found it to be a action-packed adventure, but listening to people break it down, I was just like, yeah, this is pretty bad. Yeah, it has like a similar kind of problem where it's just pandering to fans of the series at the like most top level and not even thinking about their own story. It's just what J.J. Abrams does, <laughs> and he's done for so many of his films. And didn't he make like a deal with Warner Brothers for five hundred million to start working on DC movies? He's uh, he's seriously he's wiping through franchises. You know, he's done with Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, man. Ugh, not impressed. And so. Uh... You've you've come to sort of not appreciate TLJ as much now, yeah. Well, I, now we have to dial it back a bit, I suppose, to sort of give some context as sure. to this whole situation. Um, of course, the main reason we know each other is because of my fairly controversial Last Jedi video, where I was, I was, I, I attempted to sort of deconstruct the 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 reaction more than just talking about the movie and i don't think that's what people wanted but i was my logic was that everyone had already said everything they could about the movie and i didn't get like just a normal review up fast enough so i was like what's a different angle i can take let's try and talk about the fan shit and it just it didn't work out ultimately in the end and i i regret that angle of the video and i wish i had just talked about the movie because i would have brought up the dumb shit because I always knew that there was a lot of dumb shit in the movie. Like I joked about it with my friends once like I finished it, but I hadn't had someone break down the actual like plot and why a lot of it is like, and point out things like one of the most egregious things about the movie being that on Canto bite, those and the fucking animals and shit, they like prioritize the animals over the, the human children and like human, like smarter entities that are there that are implied to be like force sensitive. Like, just stuff like that. Like, yeah, just, do you, uh, I don't know if you've heard the counter. It's like, what were they going to do? Take them to a war zone? It's like, how about they hyperspace to a safe place, drop them off, and then go to the war well, zone? How about you just don't have any of that in the movie? Well, yeah, no, like... I agree. <laughs> by, that whole plotline is bizarre. If if it had ended with, like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, I shouldn't bother trying to try and fix it. It's just that, yeah, that was one of the initial takes a lot but, of people yeah, had. The, the main reason... I, I like the idea of having the characters going to a planet and establishing a place so then at the end of the movie they can call back to a place that they've been to show that their message is being spread. Like, I understand what he was going for, but it's through the execution. It's the same with a lot of things in the movie. Like, I, I really like the idea of taking Luke to the place he goes in The Last Jedi, but it's through the execution and just the lack of exploration that it... it doesn't work on the same level that it really could and it, that's a that's a part that really that's like the most hurtful thing about it i think to people is just the potentials it's like you get that little that little tease of something that could be amazing and, you, and your mind goes yeah. wild just trying to imagine the kind of cool shit that you could be seeing i mean it's it's fundamental right like why why is it that we can't just have episode seven and we have rays called darth vader and you're like well they're not the same character whatsoever and it's like yeah well, it's been 30 years could have been. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's not how it yeah. works. And it's like, well, we had a flashback. It's like, that was like five seconds. Like, with that, we need a lot more than that. It's like, well, Luke said the Jedi have failed in the prequels. That explains kind of his motivation. It's like, but that's so one sided. They did everything they could to stop Emperor Palpatine. That's yeah. ridiculous. And so, have, have you gone back a bit on the, um, on the fact that it went wrong with The Last Jedi more so than just the whole direction of the franchise from um, the word go? Well, so I'm the only the only significant interesting change I would have had since like two years ago probably would be that I think TFA went from like an okay movie to terrible. The more I explored all of the plot elements, because I'm still working on my series to sort of get through all of what's wrong with that film. I think it's the best of the three, but it's terrible, and that they're all terrible, and that this entire project from Disney was uh, on its face a blatant way to just be like, hey, we want more OT. How do we do that? Um, yeah, I guess I would concede that Ryan was the one out of the two of them that seemed to want to do his do something with it. I just uh, I don't really celebrate that when it's botched. Uh, JJ, you know, like I just said, The Force Awakens I think is the best one, even though it's a complete clone, a really bad clone. <laughs> but I think he achieved yeah. that better than Ryan achieved what he was uh, aiming to do. But yeah, I say in the video I just put up today about the new movie. Um, I talk about The Last Jedi and how I think about it now. Um, oh, fuck, what part was I thinking of? It's such a fucking reevaluation. I've got to. 
pinpoint what I'm even talking about. Um, what were we just saying about like Luke and? <laughs> I mean, it, this is the thing, just to clarify, I still kind of hate that movie. I hate, like, the plot makes no sense. The, I hate the way so many characters are treated and how much they they don't care for cause and effect. I appreciate the message of the film, but I just think it was botched. Like, I stand by that Poe didn't make a bad decision in the opening um, from the information we have. And a lot of people will argue, it's like, yeah, but, you know, you pissed off Leia, like, and, and, and loads of people died. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. he had to do all these things. Like, if he didn't yeah. do that, they'd all be dead. And I'm sorry that Ryan made it the way that he did, but that's all I can conclude from the narrative. I look at it and I'm like, I don't understand what he did wrong. Yeah, there's only so many leaps of logic you can take, even in a silly space movie. You know what I mean? Like, there yeah. is, there, there needs to be rules that you sort well, like, of. Have you seen what's happening with Patrick Willems lately? Like, he hates Rise of Skywalker. Everybody said because he said, uh, "How fucking dare you!" to J.J. Abrams, and everyone was like, right. "Dude, taking this space movie for children a little too seriously now, aren't you?" And he was getting very frustrated, <laughs> uh, which you could imagine. Yeah. I I don't like to tell people that, however they feel, is uh, over the top or you know like uh, apathetic, right? Because everybody's different. But like you know the the guy who like cries at the trailers regularly. Like even I'm like okay, right. calm down, dude. Like it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> but if someone said what you think that he can't because it's a kid, I'd be like no, just about anything really. Like save that for like the birth of your child or a wedding or something. But like watching a trailer for a Star Wars movie that does kind of blow me away personally. It's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And and you know good luck to him because I think I think that he's actually gained some fans from it. And it's just like yeah, he enjoys his media, fine. But to you know Patrick Williams made it a very significant point of his platform to be like you cannot take this stuff this seriously. It's for kids. And I'm like what? Wally is one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> and it's yeah, definitely that's, for that's, kids. that's the wrong way to put it. What he should be saying is that he forgives things more than he doesn't with that franchise because it's based off old adventure serials. Like, that would make more sense. Well, he's clarified like, in saying that he was specifically talking about people who go out and harass cast members, and as much as I understand that point, I completely agree with him, that's totally not how it translated in uh, his video. And I don't right. think that's the point he was making in his video, honestly. I it's think just, why, just why even pick the fight? Like... Um, well, he referenced me in that video as well. He said, I don't care if there's a five-hour video of a guy angrily ranting about how she hates the film. And I was like, that's not what I did, but all right. Uh, right. And, you know, if you if you said what I was doing was taking the movie too seriously, I'd just be like, no, nah, I, I took it as seriously as I take pretty much any stories. I, I like my stories. I don't know. Especially Star Wars, quite close to me. I, uh, Luke Skywalker was not someone I realized I cared about so much until I watched TLJ, because I was like, what the hell happened to you? Like... You know, mm -hmm. like when he's like, "Go away!" I was like, "Oh my god, what the fuck?" Yeah, I mean, it's a totally fair perspective and read on the movie. Like, I, I get it, big time. Um, well, how do you feel about your video right now? Like that one back then? Oh my, the the last Jedi video I put out. Yeah, yeah, I already sort of said like I I regret the angle I I took and I wish I had just done a more regular review so maybe people would have understand did like where I'm coming from a bit better. Mm -hmm. That's what I was, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like I was reevaluating in my new video, my, a more, you know, thoughtful, um, look back at the film. Cause everyone knows the things that I like about it, but they didn't really hear the things I didn't. And uh, the things that I don't like about the movie, I sort of said today, which are all the things, you know, everyone right. knows, like it's just reiterating, but it was the imbalance. I think of that original video that pissed people off and led to this impression. Well, there was uh, um, the quote I remember that annoyed me was the, the whole like Star Wars is a is a uh, series about finding the light or whatever, and it was like why are fans like hating when they should be? Yeah, that's a, that's very over the top. Well, yeah, because it was weird coming from you as well because like I really like your takedown videos of stuff like uh, Destiny. I've never played Destiny, mm. and I really enjoy your video to just just yeah throttling it right, and and there's people yeah. who are like isn't that series equally about trying to like work toward the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not consistent with the way I'd made videos before, and that was a mistake to take that angle. I mean, okay. I, can't, I can't change it now. It's like it exists. I'm not going to take the video down because I don't. I don't do that. I like leaving my my yeah. history up so people can see. Like, I um, think it's important to show that your opinion can change. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's really toxic to like. Well, I've I've been open that people into. If you yeah. asked me what I thought of TFA four years ago, I'd have told you it was a great film. Yeah. And yeah, if you I mean. had me talk to me now, I'd be like, you are really not looking at it. And I watched, I think it was ER's video, 
where I was like, holy shit. Like, I didn't realize so much about what's wrong with TFA. And then I looked right. into it myself. Yeah. And just being a little bit more critically eyed instead. Because I, you know, I'm, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Like, JJ knew what he was doing. He dangled them keys, man. Like, the Millennium Falcon, Han Solo, lightsabers. I was just like, yeah, this is Star Wars. I got my Star Wars. And then you, once it all dies down, you're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Yeah, because they just focused purely on the visual um, yeah. and relied on nostalgia for the as the substance. But nostalgia isn't substance, so that's a problem. Um, yeah, agreed. Uh, and obviously, yeah. So timeline of events. Then um, Rags made his response to you. Um, yeah, you were not happy yeah. with that response, as far as I'm aware. Um, well, obviously, I wasn't pleased. No, no, no. Like this is the natural result. Anybody finds out there's a video on them, they're immediately going to be defensive. That's totally yeah. Fine. And I, I have no problem with someone um, like disagreeing with me and going through why they thought what I said was ridiculous. Like I, I have no issues with that. But obviously, like it's just like awkward, you know. It's like when YouTubers are making videos about each other, like it's, it's like picking a fight in a way. You know, like it's well. I mean, you you know, you're talking to the guy who's we've responded on EFAP now to more YouTubers than I don't even know what are the singular. That's what I mean. You guys, has. the thing, you guys are way more used to it than I think a lot of other YouTubers are. Because, and, and you uh, know, I want to I want to clarify. Like, our goal is never to 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 bully or destroy. Like, as much as there may be some kind of like hyperbolic memes about it. Like, we've I don't know if you if I've said this before, but like our I want to say fifth episode, we address a video made about me. And the guy who made it came on to guest, and we talked about his video, and he's now become the most regular guest we have outside of me and Rags. So why why do you think that? Sorry, excuse my voice, people listening. I've got a cold at the moment. Why do you think there's like a a narrative spread saying the opposite then to that kind of thing? Uh, I, I don't think what I'm, we do is common enough for people to not take it as essentially a, 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 like like if you watch us and you know let's just say we cover a guy who says star wars is uh is a show that is meant for babies no adult could ever enjoy something like this we we, we might go like what a terrible opinion that makes no sense at all what a piece of shit that's, that's random words like that i can totally understand if they felt attacked or whatever uh right, I, yeah, I usually don't go as far as like being like this person's a piece of shit i'll usually try and be devil's advocate as much as i can but i will uh, absolutely condemn arguments that I think are terrible, and I try not to assume too much motivation unless I've got a lot of evidence, which, like I have with Quinton, for example. But we don't have to get into that. Um, right. The idea is that uh, it's a couple of guys watching a YouTube video, taking it all piece by piece, very seriously, and assessing like what we think. We've covered, I think, now like I want to say about eight videos in total, not many, but we played them and we've concluded these are actually very good. Um, we usually watch videos that were either sent in, like fans really want us to cover them, and we 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 cover ones that um we think offer a lot in terms of a vehicle for conversation. Right. We usually are like, hey, the, if if person feels they're misrepresented, they can come on and talk about this with us. But they rarely respond well. We've had several exa We've had now I think like eight people drop in live when we're covering them and have a discussion with us. Um, on yeah. the video, and then we promote their channel, and it all works out really well. But we can't expect that to happen every time, and we do what we can, sort of thing. But we, we, we principally will not remove the idea of insults because I don't know that like we're going to be in a world where we just pamper everything, where we're just like, mm -hmm. I disagree with your argument. Here is why. Next argument. You know, it's right. nice to have a bit yeah, of spice yeah. and entertainment. But in in the same way, if I cover a video that's covering me, that says something like, Moore's a fucking idiot, he has no idea what he's talking about, I'd be like, alright, present your argument. Instead of being like, I'm not going to watch this, this is, uh, they're taking it too far. Right. I, I try to ignore the insult element if I'm going to try and maintain that people don't need to take insults that seriously. Um, if that makes sense. I, I guess, but y yeah, obviously, you know, when strangers are insulting you and, you know, like maybe exaggerating the way they're they're behaving for entertainment for their fans but like that's the thing about youtube everyone has their own little area and their own way of existing and sometimes when they overlap they kind of clash in that way and i think that's kind of what happened um with that whole rags thing because right because he respond that's his forte he responds to people that's always what he's done he was very into it, star wars he'd met me and then he saw your video did disagree with it and decided to respond to it yeah, and all all it did was start the conversation at like a a, a toxic place, really, um, because 
it could have all easily been avoided um if like i could have because I, I didn't know about any of you guys i only found out about it because of people messaging me after that last jedi video and you're of course doing sure your are you suggesting that if he'd like sent you a message you might have been like yeah i'll yeah. chat about it yeah absolutely does that like happen I, I typically well yeah yeah with other youtubers i've often talked about um like films i even talked with um you know the youtuber the act man he's like mm -hmm. a gaming channel i talked with him um about the last jedi just really casually just you know just talking about the movie like you do with just friends so i have no problem talking to other people about it you know as yeah, long yeah. as it's you know, civil but it's, that's just what made it feel weird to me from the beginning was just like oh well, well i guess I mean, similarly, I right, kind of, if you had said to Rags, like, send him a message saying, I think your video was extremely unfair, I'd like to discuss it with you, he probably would have said yes. And I actually did search for him on Twitter to see, like, us, like, well, okay, what the fuck? Why? Oh, right, yeah, he might Why? have been banned at that point. But he, but he was banned, so yeah. I, I couldn't, um, and I, I didn't really search for it further than that, because I didn't really know. Well, I was, I was, I was just going to say, like, the... Comment. Best thing to do if they can't find Twitter, this might even be the first thing, is go to a YouTuber's about page and just look for their business email. That would be the best way to contact him. Well, the thing is, like, honestly, um, this is the, aside from that, like, Derek Savage thing, it's the only beef I've ever had with uh, another YouTuber of that size, uh -huh. at least. Um, so I, I don't know really what I'm doing, like, or what you're supposed to do. So I just thought, I guess I'll okay. just ignore it. Well, that's the thing, right? So if, if you come out saying I, I fucking disagree with a shit ton of what Rags has said, and I think it's unfair that he didn't contact me uh, before going through this video, like I I thought that's the kind of etiquette that YouTubers could have with each other, but I guess not. I probably wouldn't have disagreed with that. I'd just be like, I mean, yeah, you, you can go as far as uh, sort of, like we don't invite every single person we cover on EFAB. I just don't know if it's it's feasible or reasonable. Like if... yeah. We, we're we interested, so we, we see it as a sort of, we are viewing YouTube casually as one does, and we're like, look at this video that's available, this person made public, so this person should be ready and waiting for someone to be, like, watching it and possibly being critical of it, or celebrating it. Like I said, we've praised and um, supported and promoted loads of different channels as we watch these uh, sort of things, it's just we, we take them as they come, sort of thing. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if it'd be worth to... When you know you're going to be covering a video, maybe maybe like emailing them or trying to tweet them or something, just once, just so there's something, you know. <laughs> so people like if they really want to and they feel like it's really unjust, they have a chance before, you know, like it's all, you know, you could even have them on the show or whatever if they see it. I mean, like, it, as much as I understand, it's like so if someone said, um, let's just say, I know this is not not saying this would happen, but let's just say you, Tro, and Quinton did a podcast. We watched uh, my. I rage on uh, TLJ or whatever and responded to it live. I wouldn't be upset that you hadn't told me. I'd be interested to see it. Right. I get. I. I just don't. I just don't do this. You know. I, yeah, I don't I, really I start beef with people. Like, I try to keep it just out of the channel because I just think it's also like it just never yeah, ends well. Everyone and it's has like not a, fun to me. Everyone has a different idea of like what I guess the correct etiquette would be. Um, yeah. Exactly. What do you like up to date feel about Rags' video? Um, well, obviously, like, well, here's the thing, right? I like, I, when, after I've like spoken to you and all these people and read all the reviews and everything and like adjusted my opinions on it, like, I, I can't say it was because of that video or okay, any or anything because of that video. Um, perhaps talking to you specifically, um, was like a point where I started thinking about it in a different way, perhaps, but. I, I don't really like the video, obviously. Like, I don't know how I could be expected to. <laughs> like, the the whole point of the video is to make me look like a moron. Like, how could I... <laughs> um, I you know mean, I, mean? <laughs> it, I can totally get why you would have that sort of reaction. Rags is, uh, his character is very confident, and so he will often use, like, sort of responsive language that'll definitely make the person look like, like, where were they going with that point? But, um... I mean, yeah, it was making me look like one of those, you know, like the normal stuff he covers, which is like some pretty extreme stuff sometimes. So it was like putting me in the same bucket as them. Uh, well, yeah. sure. I, I don't I don't know that he would say that. I don't know if he thought that about your video. Like we've... Uh, um... It may not be intentional, but I think it does read that way for some people. That's all. Yeah, possibly. Um, so then uh, TRO decided to make his video on rags, uh, timeline-wise, I guess. And I was uh, featured quite heavily in it as well. And Quinton was the guest to 
criticize both me and Rags. And obviously, me and Rags, I, I'd seen a portion of it. I believe I left a comment saying something like, oh, hey, this is cool. Um, let's get this discourse going. Let's let's talk this through. Um, I'll update the like I'll edit this comment as I'm watching it, and I got incredibly disappointed immediately by a lot of the ways that um they approached the arguments. And I think I ended the comment with being like, I'm I'm not watching anymore. Like this is you've gone way too far with a lot of this. Um, and we and left this it. is when yeah, this is when I'm I'm like not part of the story anymore. Like that that True. video was made independently of me. Um, but, um I knew I knew it was being made, but I I added no. Um, like opinions to it, like it was totally their opinions. So. Um, but before we get to like we any of the EFAP involvement, you did because uh, this is this is if I'm getting the timeline right, just correct me if I'm wrong. But you left the comment on it that really pissed me off, right? Yeah, because I, I'd never spoken about it publicly at all, like the whole rags thing up until then. Um, uh -huh. and so that was like m my point where I just vented. You know, I just left a comment, just pissed about like everything that went down because of it you know all the like bullshit that happened mm -hmm. um and then you saw it and contacted me on twitter and that's what started our first uh actual communication beyond just like and third so, party reports you know for clarification you consider that comment a mistake now do you or i do i th i think um you should be allowed to you know, do your thing on this side of YouTube, like, and exist, and like, I have no problem with what you're doing. Like, that's fine to me. Okay. And that was like the main thing I was saying in that comment. And I was uh, just pissed off about it. Like, I don't know what to tell you. It's just emotional about it. Yeah. No, I I understand. Um, because like I I haven't forgotten. Because like I said, I I told you like you're you're one of the significant people along with several others that inspired me to start my channel. So. <laughs> and like I know that the like Suicide Squad I think is the video that I would cite for you, but um, you said something along the lines of like if you think this video, if you think this movie is good, like you have awful taste. And I remember being like, <laughs> e even I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, um, that was. I actually regret saying that. A bit. Right, very... but um, there are other instances where you'll so say something like, <laughs> yeah. But there are other instances where you'll say like something is so poorly designed or constructed or created in the movie sense that you'll be like this is just objectively fucked like mm -hmm. there's no it doesn't matter what your perception actually is personally you're just and the example i would have given to you and i cited suicide squad i think was just they have subtitles you can't read because they're the color that matches the background they just <laughs> fucked that up completely and that's the that's the tip of the iceberg with something like suicide squad so um we got to clarify all of that and um Again, like this, I'm not in any way trying to push you anywhere or entice you, but it's just because we get these questions all the time. Mm. Did you feel like it was something to apologize for or, or not? What? Sorry, what? 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 Uh, those, what those for? The <laughs> the comment that said I was a uh, childish condescending. And, uh... Oh yeah, but you have to you have to also understand like I'd never like watched any of your videos. I barely knew who you were, and my entire perception of you was built around like just comments left by people that I'd read. Like, I mean, so it was just yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't mean what I said in that comment. So yeah, I do apologize for. All right. And I apologize. I apologize to you in person on that call actually about that comment. I'm that's sure. that's what I remember. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Um. I, uh, so in that conversation, I think our first conversation was just about, like, trying to be objective about reviewing something, and then we moved on to just TLJ in general, and, um... Yeah, and then again, we talked about Marvel for, like, hours. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, correct me if I'm wrong, but me and Wolf, like, we did go, try and go through, like, all of the significant issues we had with The Last Jedi, right? Yeah, go, well, the, the call, the context of the call, from my end, anyway, wasn't about um, no, it just became talking about the last Jedi. Like we were just, we were just chilling, just talking about whatever, and of course that came up, and we just started talking <laughs> naturally, in a laid back sort of way. And you just went through, I assume, what um, like you've all covered before, like just what like, you have in your brain now, so you can just whip it out whenever you want. Yeah, like obviously um, it's it's been our uh, our bread and butter if you will like we know the arguments back to front we know all the counters back to front yeah. like it's just been something we've been doing for a while yeah so um yeah that obviously got me thinking and like you ha at a certain point you like have to concede you you can't you know you have to take the blow to your ego and accept the fact that like oh, maybe i did read this wrong so then you've got to think about like 
So what was it that I was really liking about the movie? And I think I've discovered that, but... Mm -hmm. uh, um, again, so do you remember when we were like, is there any chance you could have anything publicly said about it and you essentially were just like, not, you don't really want to? Yeah, so uh, this is the part that I found just uh, a, a little bit off to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to talking about this kind of like behind the scenes drama type stuff, but I guess I have to just to... Uh, I guess defend myself in a way. Um, yeah, yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, but yeah, like, so I found out at the end of the recording, like after we'd been um, talking for all the cause all those hours, because it started late and it ended really fucking late. Mm -hmm. What was it? We must have started talking at like two a.m. Yeah, and finished and at like seven a.m. It was ridiculously Maybe. long. Yeah, yeah, it was obscenely long. Um, but I found out at the end when. Uh, we we were tired. That um, Wolf had been like secretly, um, like recording me for for the duration of the Discord call, like without my knowledge, which I thought was a uh, kind of a slimy thing to do and like an unprofessional thing. Um, even if it wasn't like spread around or anything, but you yeah, know, and so and, and his motivation was that. Um, he wanted to show it to a friend. Yeah, just um, full context. I believe the conversation was supposed to be between me and you, and then you asked if you could bring in, I think, TRO. And then yeah. I told Wolf in a PM, I was like, I'm actually speaking to you directly right now, because I was blown away. And he was like, holy shit. And then I think I asked at one point, is it okay if he comes in? Because he's a friend of mine, and I know that he'd want to meet you. So he came in, and then a friend of his at the time was told that he was talking to you, but he obviously couldn't just bring anybody in. And so the person was like, I don't believe you, that sort of thing. And he was just like, oh, no, I am. And he did a, um, I think, it, like a private stream and just sent the guy the yeah. link. And he was like, see there. And then he just left it run. And now right. the, the contention comes in where, let's say the conversation went badly and, like, we just didn't get on with each other and we thought that it was, like, not even worth it. There's a good chance Wolf would have deleted it. The reason why he presented it to us as something to release is because he thought that the conversation went really well and it was like something fun for everybody to listen to. But obviously yeah. what he hadn't counted on was the fact that me and you were just like, oh, it was recorded? Like, I remember being, the way yeah. I operate, because again, this yeah, is... Yeah, I remember hearing it in your voice. You're a bit like, oh. <laughs> and, and this is the thing. Like, I know that we're going to be slightly different on this, but like, me and Rags have talked about this publicly. I, pr I, I don't say anything... Uh, that I don't expect to be put online because of how the internet is. And secondly, if you're speaking to somebody who, like, there's different conversations I've had with different people over the time who have been, like, outwardly critical of all of me and my work, will only agree to a private discussion. And so uh, I half the time will recommend, like, record yourself for safety in case something is said or done that is not representative of what happened, just to cover your own ass sort of thing. However... The conversation we had, there was nothing controversial. It was just like, oh, this is the movie, this is what we thought of it, and you were like, okay, and you took a lot of thought into mind, and then it sort of ended. And I was actually, like, like in the position of being like, okay, because of the fact that he hadn't let us know, um, it's probably not good etiquette-wise to, to release it, and we don't really need to. Not hugely important. You could just we can you know we can talk publicly about how, hey, yeah, you know, mine might have been changed, blah blah blah, but yeah, yeah. maybe not. However, it if was if, let's it say, was a principal thing. That was it. Like I just, I just thought it was really weird, and it made me feel quite strange. You know, like right. to be secretly recorded and be like, "Oh, I, I didn't realize that was part of the deal here." I'm coming, like it was the first time we spoke, and yeah, you know. I'm coming from the perspective of knowing him really well. I know for a fact he didn't do it with any ill intent. The, the fact that he hasn't released it, I think, probably shows that at least to a degree, because the it was supposed to just fade into memory, right? But obviously. Pushing well, the story. Yeah, I was never too concerned because I was like, well, I say nothing I'm, like, embarrassed of in there. Like, we just talk about the movie in a pretty nonchalant way, and, like, I just <laughs> concede, like, okay. uh, which Which I honestly think would have been fine, but then it was the following week, I think, that you said on Sardonicast that you hadn't heard any good arguments against uh, TLJ, and obviously yeah, we were so... made aware of that. And then everyone was like, don't you have... Um, yeah. any, like, evidence that he said thingy, and the wolf was like, well, yeah, actually, I, I had recorded it, and then I was like, ah, let's, and I, I, you can find it the past year and a half, I have been definitive on not releasing it out of principle, um, because it's, it's, Which it's I thank harsh. You for. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. Because yeah, I, yeah. I, I criticize people for doing it, like, people release DMs that I've been in, and I'm like, you shouldn't do that, but okay. Yeah, it would be a scummy thing to do, yeah. And, you but know, I Wolf just, hasn't released it either, but it was, 
like frustrating to listen to and then we had to tell people but that's not the conversation that was had and then we had loads of people being like you get that Maul is lying right like he's doing it just to try and de like bring down the credibility of IH everything right and that was no, my, mo my motivation for um, saying that which I do like I do not mean and regret like saying um, was Okay, it may seem petty to those listening, but like it, it was because of that call angle. I was like, wait, was this like a trap or something? I was like, what the fuck? Is this like now this thing they have on me? It felt really strange to me. And I didn't enjoy that. So I was just like, okay, maybe I should just like not think about that for a while. So I, I just was like, okay, I'll just go back to how I felt before. And then like over the past, however long since that fucking film came out, it's just <laughs> great just changed in my mind and i i had the why well, put it in my video today like what i my new thoughts on the feeling or my <laughs> my new thoughts on the film mm -hmm. um as a result so i mean and I again what else that, I can do. that's part of why we're having this conversation to sort of merge the two povs but um and also yeah. explain like why certain actions were taken because on our end we would just keep getting sent snippets and clips and comments and like one of them was you and a friend of yours discussing how like Rags made a terrible video with no points, and we were like, "Why yeah, would?" Because I was bitter about it. <laughs> if I'm like, I'm a bit inebriated. I'm on my podcast with my mates. I'm just gonna talk shit, you know. What I mean? Right, but you get what happens next, right? Like everyone shares it. Yeah, and we it have to address it. it. Yeah, and uh, obviously, yeah, I, I'm still because at this point, I was still always trying to find a way to have a conversation with you. I was always like, let's clear the air, let's get this done, let's get this over with, get that mm. bad blood out of here. And we nearly, <laughs> we nearly made something of a plan, but then it never sort of uh, came to fruition in any way. Um, I was playing Left yeah. 4 Dead at the time, I think, it was a while ago. Oh, really? <laughs> I remember killing a tank, it was epic. But, you know, that's this epic game of moments. It's not re relevant to this Yeah, that's the, that's the annoying thing about all this. Like, the conversation around our conversation is what the toxic part is. Like, whenever we have discussed the film, it's been just, like, so laid back and, like, relaxed. And we've just come to agreements and been, you know, fair about it. And Sure. Like, well, uh, you know, but then it's the a discussion is so fucking there, toxic right? about it. Like, it's a it's yeah. a world where everyone's retorting and and quipping. Um, we were happy to let it die, um, because we rarely would ever mention it. But when we're getting sent this stuff, and like when I saw that description in your video, I was just like, oh for fuck's sake, again. Um, well, yeah, because I'm still bitter about the rags video. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but it does stuff. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Well, that's the you. It's weird because, like, I just I'm in my house by myself making these videos, and you don't you don't truly understand how your video is read. You know, like you're so biased towards your own video, you just have like no way to how to properly figure out how you're perceived. So, like, if I'm feeling angry in that moment, I might put some you know snide thing in the description just because it like made me laugh at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, I saw it, and, and as much as you were like, well, that was obviously a comment directed at Rags, um, that video, like, this uh, yeah, is, this is context you, you may or not, may not be aware of, it's fine whether or not you are, but obviously, several months later, we kept getting messages about how Tiero's kind of destroyed uh, Rags and Quentin destroyed me, and we were just like, but they didn't. And then it was like, well, you know, you're not addressing it, can't help but feel like maybe you think you can't argue against it, and we were like, fine, and me and Rags made a date, we committed to going through the entire thing, we had references, and again, I don't know if you know this, but this is not only admittedly a fault by TRO, but Quinton as well. Um, in Rags' video, he says it's weird that Kylo doesn't use the Force to save himself, and he's getting strangled in the throne room, if you remember. Like, he oh, could have... I, I haven't seen the film for a while. I it's when Rey it. saves him by throwing the lightsaber to him, if you remember. She says, Ben, and he, like, lights okay, it up. Yeah. And it's, it's like, why wouldn't he just, like, force push the person behind him or force choke the person? There's loads of different things he could do, but he just pretended... Oh, and that's not something they did in this film, was they used the force a lot during fights. So I was like, oh, okay, back on that, I guess. Like, you, do you remember the bits where right, they're, like, yeah. slashing each other and then they would hold each other's lightsabers away with the force? I thought it was kind of mm -hmm. interesting, I guess. Um, but that was Rags' point. And it was edited in TRO's video that uh, Rags is complaining that Luke didn't use the force when fighting Kylo or vice versa in, on Crate. And we thought that was really weird, because it was like, but he is using the Force. He's a Force ghost, person uh, projection. Yeah, I mean, I can't comment on any of this, because I didn't write... No, of course. All I'm doing you know is mean? giving you some context, and uh, 
there was another right, as one to, as to what keeps escalating it. Yeah, and so we were very unhappy with all of that. We 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 got through it all. We had TRO on. We presented it all to him, and he was like, "Yeah, this isn't great." Um, a few more months down the line, he's unlisted the video now. I, as far as I know, it's still unlisted. And Quinton publicly said that, uh, "Yeah, sure, you made an editing mistake, but it doesn't really matter because the point still stands." And we were like, "No, it doesn't." Quinton's not um, got a great reputation when it comes to EFAP. <laughs> but the Again, the, the point know. is that saga ended. Um, we'd, we'd addressed it, we moved on, but then obviously, like, there's just, there was pieces left that just weren't made up, and I just always felt like it was because I had never got to speak to you specifically, to, to, to sort of give context right. for all of this and receive yours, and have everyone hear about it, and then end it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when we, like, just lay down the timeline, it makes you question why any of this even happens, you know? <laughs> like, what? A lot, of, a lot of interesting decisions. Uh, like, TRO's video is po is possibly one of his worst. That's the interesting thing, because I'm still subscribed to him. I check him out, uh, different topics he covers. And the Rags one, I don't know what's going on. Like, there's, there's portions where you'll have um, him commenting over Rags speaking while music is playing. Um, he, like, his script is strange. The editing is, is like, really choppy. They, they approach different portions of Rags' video out of order instead of just, like, going chronological. It's... Like we, we we thought it was terrible, but we would still be maintaining that Rags' video isn't isn't all that bad at all. Like it, we thought that he addressed a lot of the things that you brought up. Maybe I'd be willing to admit that um he doesn't give you the greatest benefit of the doubt, but would you Yeah, he doesn't at all. <laughs> would you concede at all that he made any good points or Well, I'm sure if he, the the points he makes about the movies, I'm sure like on a lot of levels are correct. I'm sure we'd have to go through each one and like, you know, debate each one. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. It would never fuck it. Well, no, it's not gonna fucking happen. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I like, I can't be, how can I be objective about this video? You know, like, um, how? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, it's, that was never really like my issue. It was just more about making sure everybody understood what has happened. But yeah, but that's like, Without that video, none of this happened. Well, sure. You know what I mean? Without your video, none of this happens. <laughs> Without EFAP, a lot less. <laughs> well, I, I, didn't, I wasn't calling out individuals. No, sure. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, an all, it's an avalanche that starts really as far as back as Ryan Johnson deciding to take the job as directing TLJ. <laughs> um, and the discussion has been crazy over this past two years, and now Rise of Skywalker is going to be... Oh, it yeah. ain't slowing down. <laughs> well, slowing yeah, that's down. the thing. I actually think TLG will probably outlast Rise of Skywalker eventually because people want to talk about how either the, the Last Jedi was the last good Star Wars film or that it, it was the reason that Rise of Skywalker is bad. Like, people like to, because everybody right. hates Rise of Skywalker outside of Movie Bob, uh, from what I can see. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh,. But yeah, like, all the people who I, I've known to like TLJ did not like The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. And then all the people who hated TLJ hate Rise of Skywalker too, because it's, you know, it's just... I don't think that there was going to be a third to this trilogy that was going to be great. It's going to be pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah, well, I... a lot I, to work with. I, I have my theories about why um, The Last Jedi got the, like, critical reaction it, it did. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if there are based on anything solid really but if i had to take a guess i think it would be based off the fact that ryan johnson has always been an indie darling which obviously film critics enjoy and his take on the movie was like his indie take on it like it was it was him ignoring the the saga like as a whole and just making his own film based on yeah. the chess pieces that were given to him and that's the only like way i can justify enjoying the film is like just basically it being like an elseworld fan fiction star wars movie and that's the same for all of these disney yeah star wars i, was movies, I kind of feel that way about disney's movies for star wars as a whole they're just these crazy yeah uh... but taking like even like that last jedi like revelation made me go back to the original movies and reassess them a bit and i thought a new hope and empire hold up very very well but i had some real issues with return of the jedi so like it 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 was making me like reassess like where i was cuz you know when you first get into like star wars and movies if you're a little kid like you just mindlessly like all of it no matter what you know 
and like as you grow up you gradually like your taste adapts and i just never had to even think about it in on that way before you know so mm-hmm. like it has it has to start somewhere and for you it was when you were sat in the theater watching it and there was just something like a wrong feeling in your gut i didn't have that wrong feeling uh-huh. not until like i started you well, know, yeah i didn't have it with tfa right but a lot of people did yeah like it, it's it's not uncommon to feel differently about a movie you know like a year later five years later like opinions change like we've already said mm-hmm. and that's fine so you're not not hugely into TLJ anymore. I I haven't watched it in a long time. Like it's not a film I want to rewatch particularly right now because there's just so much that that is always like niggling in the back of your mind, like bugging you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, yeah, I said in my newest video, for every like moment of brilliance, there's an equal one of like shittiness. That I just I just. I've tried doing the mental gymnastics, but I can't. I just can't after a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that's the timeline in full. Then, we we is there anything yeah. else uh, to clarify? Um, is that is that it then? Is that like? I, well, that I clear? think so. I don't know the because you know you you you've spoken to me now, and this this will be able to be heard by people. So there's no there's no comments available that can say you're you're um, avoiding it or you're cowardly or you're not. Uh, continuing with your position right. on TLJ, like the you know people will hear this and it should clear it all up. And I mean, you know, I'm more than happy to work with you in any way, shape, or form going forward in some some scenario. But if not, if it ends up just being this the last time we interact, that's that's okay as well. Do you think part of it happened just because of like the extreme emotions about around Star Wars? Yeah, uh, you get a lot of comments in so many different places. That you start to lump them all into this sort of one person yeah so i feel um, like if if only i'd pre- presented the video in a clearer way and my and actually properly communicated my feelings then people wouldn't have been annoyed by it in the same way it's just yeah, the possibly. fucking structure of it well, like, it. yeah did, what's happening like, now yeah. right is a lot of people who are like rise of skywalker is bad because of this reason who are people who love tlj and the people are like but but that same thing that like kind of errors in tlj and then they'll be like ugh. Like different people can like different things for different reasons. It's like, oh yeah, but but this is confusing. And and obviously, like I've always known you to be very like hyper specific with understanding. I don't know cause and effect. And so I was really just blown away by the fact. Like pe- I remember people messaging me because it was around the time I released part two of my TLJ critique that they were like, I had everything really liked Last Jedi. And I was like, what really? Like how? It's such a nonsense movie. And then I look watch the video. I was like, oh. I'm confused, and it's fine because everyone can like whatever. It's just I, I didn't expect it. That's all. Yeah, I, I, I just think the conversation is more complicated than just it's the worst film ever made, like sure. type thing. Like I, I like the, the the, like middle conversation that goes on about like because what what is good here? What is good Star Wars and what is bad Star Wars about this? Because mm-hmm. I th- I, and I think that conversation is a lot more interesting than The Force Awakens because it is just New Hope, and it is a lot more interesting than what is the new one, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's what really intrigues me about the movie because it was doing so much, like creative, unique kind of Ryan Johnson ideas, which I've like I, I've always enjoyed, like his his type of movie and his journey. I followed like since basically the beginning with him so i've been like a fan of his all right um, so from that perspective i was really intrigued by the movie and thought that conversation was worth having as opposed to getting bogged down in certain minutia um sometimes and like pinpointing what is actually like valid and not valid that was all i was trying to say and of course that also comes down to certain preferences you have but Right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, let's say you release that video, and then I, I, I had no, I didn't, would never have expected that I could send you a message, and you would actually be like, "Yeah, I'll talk to you about it." But I would have loved to at that time. I would have had that same conversation we essentially had. I, I, just, I think people assume that you just can't contact YouTubers at once, like a certain level of subs is reached. Yeah, and that's just like a just a reality, I guess, of just the perception of everything. So I, I don't blame you for assuming that, but neither of us could have known either way. So sure. Yeah. Which, I guess, leads us to the end. <laughs> like, we did it. 
yeah, thank fuck. Like, it's just been on the back of my mind for a while. Yeah, and, you know... Yeah, especially because it's just so, like, silly. Like, um, well, that, that was the thing for me, because I was just, like, I'm pretty sure, because a lot of people being, like... Because there were some people being, like, the... Um, you guys... Uh, there, there, was a, there was an accusation that we, like, bullied you. Um, and I was like, I felt like conversation was friendly in the, uh, the one we had with... Well, the you guys... You guys... Well, you admit you've got a reputation that precedes you as a group. Well, I'm referring not to, like, EFAB or anything, but just... Because this was before you even knew who we were. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, that that reputation is what I built my initial thoughts that led to that comment that I apologized to you for. You know what I mean? Oh, so there's well... This whole, there's this whole communication problem going on. Yeah, I, I just, like, you know, again, like, I get how it happened, but I try to avoid that myself, as in, like... Say, for example, when someone gets accused of, you know, like pro Jared, for example, they're like, can you believe he did X, Y, right. and Z? I'd be like, I haven't looked into it. I'm I'm not going to say anything because I, I think I remember there's an EFAP where I was just like, if that's true, that's awful. I, I don't know. I haven't, I don't know. Well, um, yeah, and I, I probably would have been more rational about it if, if, you know, not for the rags video, <laughs> which had just harbored, you know, some... Well, angry about it. I can assure you. you that Rags is an extremely good friend of mine, very friendly, and that uh, this this whole thing has obviously done the same sort of thing in reverse. He's he's not gotten a great impression either, and it's just a. I would agree, it's a matter of communication falling the fuck apart. Yeah, it's people from different sides of the planet with different audiences, like just that in another life never would have even like met or in any form. Yeah, just sure. like happening to clash because of this string of events known as the Last Jedi. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's uh, had quite the ripple effect. I'm sure he's proud of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's that's most of what I'd say to be honest. Yeah. Like I got that. That's most of it covered. No, I'm I'm, I'm happy with that. I just wanted. Uh, to, yeah. Are people normally? Does it normally go like this, or is it? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. People don't are know. often surprised at how I act in, in conversation versus like one of my rage videos because obviously I'm a, a very right. assertive and straightforward in those. But I've always felt that that personality comes through on an EFAP stream. So if someone sees me responding to the video, I don't get right. how they get the impression. Because like with the whole Jenny Nicholson thing that happened recently, like we were considered uh, sexist trolls who like constantly rip into people with no with no quarter. And then you can get right. several sections of the video where we're like, all right. The idea that it's a flaw in the film that Joker would be punished for losing the sign because it was a going out of sale sign, and that a going out of sale business wouldn't need or care about the going out of sale sign. We were like, that sounds like the opposite. Like, wouldn't he absolutely need it? Especially if he was going out of sale, it could be bankruptcy. Like, and who knows how long he's right. going out of sale for? We were like, that's a strange uh, thing to say as a flaw. You take that sound bite, you're like, look at those sexist, crazy ass. I was like, oh, come on. Like, and it's not to say that we don't have any comment that you can't isolate and be like, look how assholey they are. It's like, okay, sure, but that's, you know, we ran it for like three hours talking about her video specifically. We addressed so many of her comments in a in what I would right. call a calm and civil manner, and we try to do it with everybody, but we also try to have a bit of fun, and I just, um, there is, as much as there's a huge fan base for EFAP, there's also a huge, um, let's say, opposite fan base, anti-fan base. There's a lot of people who will... Be like, you know, the memes like, oh, careful, saying something about Mola, he'll make a 12 hour video on you. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's how that works, but all right. I, yeah, I feel like that's just a thing on YouTube is that your reputation and your name does precede you. And I don't know how much control you have over it. I think it depends on who you are and like the stuff you're putting out. Yeah. Because I obviously like with a name like mine, like people instantly form a, a certain expectation, and, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I, I understand it more than anyone. However, let's say, like, you know, theoretical man said, I hate I hate everything's channel because he never talks about anything he actually likes. And then you come to this guy and you're like, but I do. And you give him examples. And then he goes, okay, fine, I do. I'd expect that guy to be like, well, then you did make a mistake, right, to that guy. And if that guy was like, nope, I'd be like, oh, you're kind of an asshole. See, yeah, I've, I've never really gone that far. Like, I just like putting it out there and just, leaving it like i'm not about like sitting in the comments arguing for hours like mm -hmm. I, understand. I just like using it as a place to vent and just like just putting out my hot takes be them shit or not <laughs> you know like, well i try not to take it so seriously because like i like i like youtube to me and the reason i like it is because 
of i remember when it like first came up and it was just like these people making videos there was no way to make money on it It it's just all about just like expressing yourself in some form so i've just liked that idea sure and I, i hate all the drama shit and i hate the way everyone creates these like armies that they send after each other and it just becomes this fucking maelstrom of <laughs> like, bullshit if we if you rewind to that point like i was just starting out and then i found out that like you know two relatively sizable channels had worked together to discredit my like method of analyzing stuff in an attempt to defend someone with an enormous channel i was like jesus this is gonna deal some damage if i don't address it uh, it's it's a rabbit hole. It's a fucking rabbit hole that never ends. Oh, I just mean that I've got an investment in like protecting myself while I don't know I don't know what your situation is, but I imagine you've been established for so long now that you don't need to necessarily concern yourself with one video destroying your career or anything. I suppose. I, um, I mean, I, maybe I don't think about it enough. I don't know. I've yeah, just, well, like, that's all I meant. Is the, that was the first point in my lifetime on YouTube that my videos were actually getting any traction. And I was like, uh oh. And Quinton Reviews, a guy who I think he had like 250,000 subs at that point, I was like, he's coming after me. It's like, okay. I actually knew of right. him before that. I had no idea that he would fucking hate me so much. <laughs> I was like, well, here we go. Yeah. It, there was a period where like commentary on other channels was like the be all end all. Uh, but I dabbled in it for a bit and I honestly regret a lot of the videos I made during that time where I was like targeting people and stuff and talking about specific people. I, I try to avoid doing that now unless it is some like, you know, like a director or, or someone who is removed from it all a bit because it, it does become very personal on YouTube for some reason. Mm. There is a more personal strike to it than someone in some business you have no attachment to and they'll never see, you know. Yeah, no, I, I I understand. I really think that this will uh, help out, I don't know, ex trying to s smooth over and help everyone understand exactly what actually went over these past two years. And uh... Yeah, God, it's been two years. How yeah. crazy is that? <laughs> <laughs> and time travels, man. That's crazy. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. I don't like hearing that. But yeah, is, uh, <laughs> is there anything else? Or do you want me to, should, we, should we stop it there? Uh, I think that pretty much is, covers it, to be honest. Like, I'm I'm happy with that. All right. So people, you know, make up their own opinions and all that, and you know, there, there's no like, I'm, I'm sort, I'm over it at this point. I think that's clear. Like, I, I don't really harbor. I'm, you know, there's some salt still there being, you know, in the wound <laughs> from the that original video, just because I just wish it didn't happen purely so all of this didn't happen. But I mean, aside from that, like, I'm not really someone who holds like grudges on people. <laughs> Yeah, I it's just like, it's the first time I've ever had to deal with something like this and like, you know, it's like a learning experience. So I think the goal is just motivations and actions explained and I I think we've we've both provided context for uh, everything that happened now. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, I hope, uh, some someone out there got something from this. Yes. Um is it all right if this uh, theory like would this be okay for me to play on EFAP for example? Absolutely. You can do what you want with it. I don't care. All right. <laughs> there we go.